Please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of what we will be looking at today, okay? Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, where do these things be so? Okay, and also read along with me because sometimes the mouth goes quicker than the brain. Got a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, a lot of stuff. We'll see what the Lord's going to do. But today, Psalm 71. Psalm 71. And I have a light expository here on Psalm 71. I do not recall if, uh, if a video on Psalm 71 has ever been done. I'm not sure. Today's the day. Psalm 71. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 5. Psalm 71, by the way, uh, we can assume perhaps that it was written of David, but it is not attributed unto anyone except the Lord himself. So, Psalm 71. And I love the way Psalm 71 starts out. There are some of you, brethren, who are going through some incredible stuff right now. And, and it always strikes me interesting when these holidays, uh, holidays, excuse me, these holidays come around. Um, it always seems that the devil likes to put his monkey in the wrench during these times. And of course, what's the holy day or the holiday, excuse me, excuse me, what's the holiday that's coming up? Oh, the obvious satanic holiday of Halloween. Okay, that's that's going to be a week from tomorrow, actually. Yeah, but I like how this psalm starts out. Verses 1 on verse 5 to begin. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, is he? Who is the author of confusion? Oh, the same people who got given you the Bibles. Satan. Rome. Okay? Deliver me in thy righteousness. And cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. And with every temptation, God will provide for us saints a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it go through it okay it's not necessarily that God will remove you from the temptation itself he can and will do that yes but see the promise is that if you look for the way to escape that he will provide that that you may be able to bear Go through the temptation, whatever it is. Okay? Yes, the Lord can deliver you from temptation. And He will. But, the promise more so is that He will provide a way of escape so that we may be able to bear it. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay? Be thou my strong habitation, Whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Amen. Amen. Whom have I on earth but thee? Whom have I in heaven but thee? Lord, to whom else are we going to go to? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Deliver me, O my God. Out of the hand of the wicked. Out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. But they love you. They're only doing these things to you because they love you. <laughs> That's not funny. That's not funny. Yeah, and the times will come that they who kill you think they do God's service, right? And all the while they're saying, we're only doing this because uh, we love you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, with friends like you who needs an enemy, right? Yeah. For thou, verse 5, for thou 
art my hope, O Lord God. And Jesus Christ, he is our hope. Okay? Thou art my trust from my youth. Psalm 31. Psalm 31. If good, you would live with us. If we could, if it could be arranged, if it could be arranged. I know there's a whole bunch of stuff, you know, being in the bounds of your habitation. I get all that. But for a brother, son, our door, our door is always open to the brethren, no matter who you are. Just make sure, just making sure that you are a brother, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But Psalm 31, verses 1 on verse 5. And see, in Psalm 71, okay, 31, 71, okay, verses 1 on to verse 5, what is the object there? What is the focal point? Psalm 31, verses 1 on to verse 5. In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down thine ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for an house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock. Oh, hallelujah. How beautiful. Thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, and there's only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved, the name of Jesus Christ. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou, thou art my strength. Beg your pardon. Into thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. As our Lord said on the cross, you know, into, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Everything we are, everything we have, all of us, all of anything that we are, is on Jesus Christ. He is our hope. Thou, O Lord. You know, when you got the enemies in your own house attacking you, and when all Chadez is going on, when the rug is just going to be pulled out from under you, you think, Thou, O Lord. Thou, O Lord. Psalm 71, verses 6 on the verse 8 now. By thee have I been holding up from the womb Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. <laughs> my praise shall be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many. But thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Uh, Isaiah 49 Isaiah 49 Isaiah 49 verses 1 on verse 4 Listen a while unto me and hearken ye people from far the Lord hath called me from the womb now yes this is Christological as it were but this is our instruction in righteousness we need a lot of that right the Lord hath called me from the womb. From the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. Jehovah saves. 
Jesus Christ. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. Right there, verse 2 is also a good, um, good verse that you can use to tell, you know, because some of these Christians, like uh, the non-dispensational um, twits out there, like, well, they were looking forward to the cross and the Garden of Eden. And, and no, no, they weren't. No, they weren't. It wasn't revealed until Paul. Until, you know, just read Ephesians chapter 3. Okay? All right? They were not looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden in the patriarchal period. Okay? There were types of the cross in the Exodus with the blood on the doorpost and on whatnot. Yes, but they were not looking forward to the cross. Okay? It wasn't revealed until later. All right? Verse 2 there is a, a one of many that you can use uh, to start the ball rolling to prove that to people. Uh, they weren't looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden. Okay? Neither was it by grace through faith you twit. Okay? Let's continue. No. How so? Well, look at that. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow, keeping him hidden, okay, of his hand hath he hid me. He hath made me a polished shaft, in his quiver hath he hid me. Okay? And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught. And in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Okay? And of course, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Okay? Verses 4 on to verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Okay? That goes for everybody. Okay? Even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Okay? Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am but a child. Or, excuse me, for I am a child. Excuse me. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. And of course, what did he say to Moses? Okay. Who made man's mouth? I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you will say. Okay. All right. Back to Psalm 71. Psalm 71, verse 9. Cast me not off in the time of old age. There's going to be a video coming where we're going to be addressing the thing about the elderly. Okay? Because recently, uh, my wife and I, we've had an experience where we went to go see a relative or, excuse me, a good friend or whatever um, at a nursing home. Um, who is in her 80s. And there is a real ministry there unto the elderly. But that's for another video. Okay? Verse 9. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Verses 25 on to verse 28. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. One I can testify to that, personally and also with testimony of the brethren. Our dear brother Jeff, okay, good example. Our dear young brother from Croatia. 
Amen, amen. He is ever merciful and lendeth. And his seed is blessed. And Abraham's seed. Okay? Abraham's seed. Oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm in that time. For reference in the scripture books. Okay? He is ever merciful and lendeth. And what are we reading to? Verse 28. And his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. That's called understanding. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? For the Lord loveth judgment. Self-judgment and judging others by a perfect standard. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. And today if you're saved, you're a saint. Okay? They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40. Verses 28 on verse 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. <laughs> there are those of you who think this all you know, came about uh, millions and billions of trillions of years ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore will I gladly glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For when I am strong, for when I am weak, excuse me, then am I strong. Why? Because we're not dependent on our own, but dependent on the Lord. Okay? <clears throat> he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly, is that an I, fall. Beg your pardon. Yeah, shall utterly fall. If I'm wrong because my eyes are messing with me, one of you will correct me on that. Um, and the young man shall utterly fall. Rejoice in thy youth, O young man, huh? But no, thou, you're going to give an account. <laughs> More on that uh, subject in another video. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46. Isaiah 46, verses 3 and 4. Hearken unto me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born from me, which are born by me, excuse me, from the belly, which are carried from the womb. And even to your old age, I am he. And even to whore hairs, H-O-A-R, even to whore hairs will I carry you. I have made, and I will bear, and I will carry, and will deliver you. 
Read verse uh, 9 again, Psalm 71. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. Where are the young people today caring for the elderly? We'll get into that in another video. That, that, that's, that's, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of videos in the way. But that, that one, especially with the recent events. But see, the order's all messed up, man. The old want to become the young. And the young don't want to become the old. And the old is supposed to set up the young. And the young are supposed to honor the whore head. Okay? The H-O-A-R. Okay? They're supposed to honor the elderly. But today, I mean, you see it out there. The kids. Especially today. You know, it's like, it reminds me of that movie called Logan's Run. Where people, they had a little red thing in their hand or something like that. Go figure. And, um... <laughs> And when it reached a certain color, like at age 30, they go and they kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Natural selection, huh? Stupid. But anyway, that, that's for another video. Verses 10 on to verse 11 in Psalm 71. For mine enemies speak against me. Oh boy, do they ever. And those of your own house, they will be your enemies. Father against the mother, the mother against the daughter, the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law, man's enemies will be those of his own house. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. <laughs> yeah. Saying, God hath forsaken him. Persecute and take him, for there is none to deliver him. Yeah, where is now that God, right? Uh, back to Psalm 37, verses 1 on to not. Whoa, where'd you go? Psalm 37, verses 1 on to verse 5 now. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for the hate shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. And as Psalm 71 began, Trust in the Lord. I, I know a lot of you do. But we do need to be reminded every once in a while, don't we? Yeah. Trust in the Lord and do good. Remembering the dispensational difference here because this was written under the law. Okay? But there is none good but who? God. And saved people are called on to good works. Not to be saved stay saved or any of that no but you know we're new creatures the lord lives within us we are to be ambassadors okay we are called on to good works the lord hasn't saved you so you can sit on your duff feeling sorry for yourself doing nothing okay and many of you are not doing that i know that some of you are. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Verse 3 is showing you the dispensational difference, okay? Because that's in context to the actual physical land of Israel. Our instruction in righteousness today, okay? Verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Now these wicked Christians will come to this and try to turn this into a thing of covetousness 
but you read First John chapter 5, you know, if our desires match the desires of what the Lord wants, then we're in good standing, okay? All right? It's according to his desire, all right? Too many, especially these charismatics, they'll come to that and it's like, well, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you that new car. He'll give you that new house. He'll, you name it and claim it, girlfriend. Okay? No. No. Our desires need to be in line with what the Lord desires. And when the desires of our heart match our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, we're in good liking. Okay? And you know what that means? Mortifying your flesh. Killing your flesh. Living a life of charity, which is self-sacrifice as I have been rebuked on here just today, okay? About self-sacrifice, charity. But see, Christianity comes to that, and they turn it all about you. When it's all about thou, O Lord! Okay? Verse 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord, contrary to your flesh, Contrary to what you want. Because what I want and what the Lord wants, even today, is two different things. They really are. Oh, I, I study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, examining myself daily. Yes, I do. But you know what? Brethren, our spirit and soul are still in this thing, ain't they? And the flesh Worth against what? Spirit. Okay. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Okay. Psalm 57. Talking about our enemies. Our, our lovely enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 57 verses 4 on to verse 6. My soul... <laughs> is among lions. And Satan himself walketh around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That's from uh, 1 Peter chapter 5. Go find it. Okay? My soul is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Set on fire. Does that mean we're seeing people running around Blazing? Uh, well, no. <laughs> uh, but set on fire. The fires of hell. The tongue is a little member. And it boasts great things. Okay? And the tongue is a world of iniquity set on fire by hell. Oh. My soul is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Gee. Even the sons of men, and see, that the, look in your margin for this. Uh, you, there might, you might see something for James in, for this verse. Whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose jaw teeth are knives, like it says in Proverbs 30, uh, verses 11 on verse 17, somewhere in there. Okay? Whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. What are we reading to? Uh, verse 6. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the mist whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. We, we got to read verse 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Your heart's fixed, isn't it, brother and sister? It better be. It better be. Psalm 109. Psalm 109. Verses 1 on to verse 4. 
five. <laughs> You're going to like this. Hold not thy peace, O God of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about also with words of hatred. You know, I've had uh, atheists cuss me out. I had the one Hamite guy over the phone just, just <laughs> rip me to shreds. Rip me to shreds. <laughs> oh, that was, that was, that was, that was special. That was special. I, at this very chair, not this exact, I might, it might have been this health phone, speaker phone. I'm just like, wow, dude. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, anyway. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are open against me. They have spoken against me with a lying, with lying tongue. They compassed me about also with words of hatred and fought against me without a cause. Words of hatred. I would rather get, not really, but, you know, sometimes it's easier to get a, a punch in the mouth because you can heal from that rather than getting um, cut to death, shredded to death with your tongue. Man's Des uh, man's deadliest weapon? Hey, brother, it's not Mick Jagger either. It's Oprah Windbag. Okay. <laughs> All right. For my love, they are my adversaries. But I give myself unto prayer. And that's not this love that doesn't tell a sinner of their sin, doesn't warn them, hey, Unless the Lord save you, you going to hell, buddy. No. No. Love is truth. Love is telling them truth. You, you don't have to be a jerk about it. Okay? Hey, okay, I've, I've failed at that. Yes, I have. Okay? But, you know, you tell people the truth. Look, if I hated you, if I truly hated you, I'm not talking about that one guy. That one guy. I'm not talking about him. That's a totally different story. All of you, if I hated you, I'd do what a Christian does. Don't don't scare them. Don't don't scare them. We gotta love them into the kingdom. We're not building a kingdom today, pal. Okay? Who's building a kingdom today? Oh, that'd be the Catholics. Okay? If I, if I hated you, I wouldn't tell you anything. If we, the church of the living God, the saints, hated you, you wouldn't hear a word from us. Contrary. You would hear, go on, go on, God doesn't, God's not mad at you, God loves you unconditionally. That's hatred. That is hatred. You might be, what? Ask an atheist. Ask an atheist. When a, when a Christian comes up to them and says, God loves you, and they fire back. Oh, excuse me. He loves me unconditionally, but he's going to send me to hell. All right? Okay? Look. <laughs> Not warning someone of the truth. Not warning someone, not making people aware of the truth of the matter. You don't have to be a jerk. Use tact, of course, but that's how we show love. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't say a word to you. Okay? But see, hatred is encouraging them when they're running headlong off of a cliff. All the while saying, God loves you. God's not mad at you. God's got a plan for your life. Okay, just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. You know, don't, you don't have to be too extreme. Blah, 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 blah. That's hate. That's hate. Oh, you're hating on me. It's like, if I hated you, I wouldn't say a word to you. 
I really wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Okay? Think I'd stand before armed people if I hated them? Okay? Y'all y'all don't know what hate is. You really you really don't. Verse 4 again in Psalm 109. For my love they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. <laughs> Brother, sister, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Hatred for my love. Because we love them enough to say, hey, do you're going to go to hell. Okay? Unless the Lord save you, you're going to hell. Can I tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ? Please. Let's, let's, let's reason together, you and I. But then again, what the Lord does through His servants, through His Word, that one thing, the Lord puts His finger on that one thing, and that's what gets you all upset. That's what the Lord does. And when you encounter a saint whom the Lord is using to get your attention, and the Lord through that saint, through His Word, put that finger on that one thing, that sin of yours that, that you're coddling. Bam! It often can make you be like, I quit. It really can. Especially especially when you get to a place that's like, okay, Lord, you're making... He just went crazy on me. <laughs> right, brother? <laughs> you know? Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verses 13. On to verse 16. Isaiah 49. Verses 13 on to verse 16. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, and break forth into singing, O mountains. For the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his dead. But Zion said... The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me. Oh, we, we, could, we could go off on this for hours. Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget. They may forget. Yet will I not forget. And right here, this verse right here, verse 16, so beautiful. I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls were continually before me. Graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Obviously, what is that a reference on to? And yet you got some of these Christians who want to... And this, this is something that actually irks me quite a bit. That you'll, they say, well, Jesus, he was pierced on the cross through his wrists. No, it was his hands. Well, the weight, uh, remember, he had nails going through his feet. Okay, they overlapped his feet. You can look up uh, Roman uh, crucifixion. How they did it, okay? They 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 got his they the his feet. I mean, he was sagging and suffocating himself. Yes, but the brunt of it the was by his feet, okay? Christ, it went through his hands, and you get some of these Christians who will even dispute that. Personally, that that that's a pet peeve of mine. That really is. It's like, well, he couldn't have been. Shut up. It's right there. Okay? I have graven thee upon the palm, 
palms of my hands. Well, the rest is the palm. Are you stupid? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's like, dude, that, 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 this is a palm. That This palm, wrist, wrist, palm. Okay? <laughs> All right? <laughs> All right? You can read in Zechariah chapter 13. Look, let's go to Zechariah chapter 13 real quick. This part is not in the notes. But I, I read that today. Zechariah 13. Zechariah 13. Okay? Again, th this is something that really irks me. <laughs> it does. I, 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 yeah, it's you, some of you, it's like, Fred, hey, you got somebody saying, well, it was through his wrists. No. See, the hand, we're in the hand of God, that's significant. And his hand was pierced because of my sin. Mm. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 13. Oh, verses 5 on verse 6. But he shall say, I am no prophet. I am an husbandman. For man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one shall say unto him, What are those these wounds in thine hands? You check in the Bible in Zechariah 13, 6. See how they mess this verse up. Okay? There's something very significant about being in the hands of the living God. Okay? Why do you think Satan will go at lengths to try to distort that? And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those which I was which those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Judas Iscariot. Friend. <laughs> a friend like that. Who needs an enemy, right? <laughs> yeah. Back to Psalm 71. Back to Psalm 71. Verses 12 on to verse 13. O oh God, be not far from me. O oh my God, make haste for my help. Verse 13. But let them be confounded and consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. This is denoting people that have made a choice to serve the devil. Okay? That have made their concrete choice. It's not that the Lord can't save these people. It's that these people have chosen already. Okay, and those are people that we are to hate with perfect hatred. Like there is a, other than myself, there is only one other person, spirit, soul, and body on this earth that I hate. And he's in England. Okay, he's in England. I hate that man. I hate him with perfect hatred because he has made his choice. He is Christ's sworn enemy. I know a lot of you have a problem with that. I know you do. I know you do. But that we are to abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Okay? When a man or a woman makes their choice and goes on in that choice and lives their entire life as an enemy of Christ, you figure that one out. Okay? But Psalm 109, Psalm 109, verses 6 on to verse 20. People have commented, it's like, wow, David's being pretty, uh, number one, different dispensation. But number two, you know, like uh, I forget what that is in Chronicles, where with Jehoshaphat, where a prophet said to Jehoshaphat, why do you love those who hate the Lord? And the love that they were talking about is having an affinity, not a showing of love. It's like, hey, you better repent. No, Jehoshaphat was yoking up with someone who hated the Lord. Okay? All right? See, we show love to our enemies by telling them the truth. We don't go arm in arm 
singing kumbaya with them. Okay? That's how we show love. But the love of Christianity is hatred. Okay? But see, when you get these people who have gone past this point of no return, David, in Psalm 109, set thou, and now pay attention to this, set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Reference on to Judas Iscariot. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. Let his children be continually vagabonds, and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Let the extortioner catch all that he hath, and let the stranger spoil his labor. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him, neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. These are, this is what's going to happen to those enemies of our Lord who have sworn themselves, sworn themselves to be enemies of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their names be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers, with every pun intended with the Jesuit fathers and the dog, uh, dog tags, right? Dog collar, excuse me, okay? Let the iniquity of, their, of his fathers be remembered with the Lord. And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Sin of his mother. Your mother! <laughs> Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Rome! Oh, look at that verse. Father so-and-so, Father Hunter, you know, the Jesuit, and uh, the mother, you know, Roman Catholicism, Mystery Babylon the Great, yeah, <laughs> okay. Let them be before the Lord continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. Because that he remembered not to shew mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. When is it enough? As he loved cursing. Cursing. Foul language and actual cursing. Like, I, I'm going to pray that the Lord destroys you, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing. So let it be far from him. And how do you bless our enemies? Truth. Truth is a blessing. Truth has to be a suffering before it can be a blessing. And see, people who do not receive a love of the truth have not been <laughs> hurt by the truth. They haven't had that truth first be a suffering unto them before it can be a glory. And see, that's what the sleazy believers really doesn't want to deal with. So they jump over the necessities in order to get to the self-exhorting, you do it. See how that works? Know why I hate those kinds of guys and what they teach? Okay? But I will say, of all the sleazy believers that I have encountered, I do not hate one of them. I really do not. I really do not. I don't. I hate what they teach. There are a few of them which I, will, I actually do hope uh, get out of that. And Oh boy, if Mr. Sunkenag would get away from the Jesuits or whatever he's involved with, what a testimony he would make about exposing the enemy. Just like Elmer from New York. If he ever turned on the Jesuits, oh wow! That, I'd like to hear, I'd like to hear Elmer uh, talk about the Jesuits and expose them. I'd love to hear that. I really would. I really would. Okay? And I'm, oh, by the way, all roads lead to Rome. You might not wear the dog collar. You might not actually be a direct affiliation. But see, every, uh, everything that is evil is working in the hands of Rome. Okay? And it's going to continue to get that way the further and further and further and closer and closer and closer. We get to the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay? 
as he clothed himself with cursing like as with his garment, so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones. Um, verse 18, water into his bowels. You know, if you have a certain problem, they'll use water to clear it up. Leave that alone. Let it not be unto him as, let it be, excuse me, let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him, and for girdle wherewith he is girded continually. Let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the Lord, and of them that speak evil against my soul. Psalm 71, verses 14, on to verse 16. But I will hope continually, and will yet praise thee more and more. My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness, and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. I could die at any moment. I could have a heart attack. So could you. My mouth, verse four, uh, 15, My mouth shall shew forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day, for I know not the numbers thereof. Okay, and we're in chapter 16. I will go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. And this one's a no-brainer. This one's a no-brainer, a reference for us. Romans. Romans 12. 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay, 17 unto 21. All right. Therefore, if circle the ifs. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Because you have Christ living in you, that's what makes you a new creature. Okay. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to saved to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given us, the saved, the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Okay? Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you, by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Okay. Verses... 7 on verse 10 that in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in, the, in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus for by grace unmerited favor the better blessing the lesser for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works, the works of the law, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. New creature, you are a new creature because you are sealed until the day of redemption. And we're going to read that here, coming up, okay? And, you know, he, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus 
on to good works. What are the good works we're called on to? <laughs> Romans 12, 1 and 2. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 25. Okay? All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, I beg your pardon, brother. All right. All right, where are we? Verse 17 in Psalm 71. O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Proverbs 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he shall not depart from it. But also, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and see the imperativeness of father and mother teaching the children in the ways of the Lord, and not have, handing your children over to the Jesuits to learn about evolution, to learn about genderism, or whatever they call it. Nonsense. Okay? Why are 8 through 11, why from beginning at like 8 or something, are the schools teaching children about sexuality? That, that's father and mother stuff. Not a Jesuitical system. Okay, we've, we've talked about that before. We've talked about that before. But 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3 verses 13 on to verse 17. 12 on to verse 17. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution... But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures. Father and mother are to train the children. We've talked about this before. But the father and the mother who have departed from God, and if they go to a God, they go to the little G God of this world, and the little G God of this world gives them a Bible, not the scriptures. A child who is brought up in the scriptures. Raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I have used... Um, his Holiness's dear son as an example, and that's a good example. His son, who is being brought up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, he is being brought up in the scriptures. When that young man reaches the age of accountability, that young man is being brought up right. Okay? That's a good example. Okay? That is. Bringing up a child in the scriptures which is supposed to be done, but has been long gone. Okay? Verse 15, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? Father and mother are supposed to cha uh, train the children. And see, verse 17 in Psalm 71, O God, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Verse 18. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not. 
until I have shewed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. And where are the elderly that are shewing the Lord's righteousness, okay, his strength unto this generation? Where are they? You got the elderly today, these Christian elders who want to be the youth. Haven't you seen that? And if they're ad admonishing them, they're admonishing them by pacifying them. Giving them what they want, not what they need. And is it any wonder when the elderly, the older people, the older generation that are supposed to be giving this unto the children, but instead what did they do? They handed the children off to the Jesuits. Is it any wonder why a lot of these children today, when it comes to an old fart like me, or to others that they just want to abandon them and scoff at them? Job 12. Job 12. Verses 9 on verse 13. Thank you. <laughs> Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind? There's a good verse for you. Doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meat? With the ancient is wisdom, fear of the Lord. And in length of days is understanding. With him is wisdom and strength. He hath counsel and understanding. Us old farts. Look, I'm going to be 50 if the Lord allows it next year. That's And our lives are in Scripture say that at the most we're going to live 120. And uh, if it's uh, 70 years or 80s by reason of strength. Okay? I'm well past the halfway mark. And see, with us, the old, we're supposed to have wisdom, fear of the Lord, and understanding. But how many of these older people have I seen, these Christians especially, that act worse than an adolescent? I've seen that, man. I have seen some of these elderly people in these church buildings, especially when you're out there trying to give them a track. Um, I have seen them. It's like, Dude, you're acting like you're a 16-year-old child. What's, what's wrong with you? Hmm? What's wrong with you? But see, in a nation that has long been against God. Psalm 92. Check this out. Psalm 92. Like I said, we're, there's going to be a video specifically about the elderly coming, okay, Lord willing. It might be tomorrow, we'll see what the Lord will have done. But It probably won't because tomorrow, Tuesday, uh, the 24th is our laundry day. You needed to know that. Uh, Psalm 92, verses 8 on verse 15, close of Psalm. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. I love that. Thou, Lord. Like Psalm 71 began. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Mine eye also shall see my desire on mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. 
My heart is fixed, O Lord, my heart is fixed. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. And Moses, his, his eye never went dim, and his natural force never abated. Paul, up until his death, okay? And what's the point? I love this. I love this tie-in, okay? Before we read verse 15, let's read verse 18 again in Psalm 71. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not, until... I have shewed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. Verse 15 in Psalm 92. To shew that the Lord he is that to shew that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Titus Titus, chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 5. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, Sound in faith, in charity, in patience. I'm not a doctor. Yeah, neither am I. Grave. Sober, not having your head messed up. Grave. Uh, people going to hell is a very serious thing. Okay? Temperate. Sound in faith. Not tossed up and down like a wave or something like that. In charity, self-sacrifice. In patience. <laughs> Verse 3. Verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And Lord have mercy, some of these Christian women out there. <laughs> brethren, brethren, huh? Come on. Come on. Some of these so called, yeah, they're, they're Christ they are Christians. They're, they're just like their mother, Rome. A harlot. Some of these Christian women, man. You, if you're a brother, you would be better off with a lost person <laughs> than being with a Christian woman. I make distinction between a Christian and a saint. They're not the same thing! Hardly the same thing. What is a saint, by the way? That'll be in there. Thank you, part. Okay? But where are the godly women teaching the young women to not be whores? Hmm, does that offend you, huh? Why is it that you see in the Jeho? at least a better attempt than what you call Christian today. Why is that? Huh? Hmm? Verse 4, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, Obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. And when you've got a smack talking wife, okay, 
or you got a wife that's going out contrary to scripture, dressed like the world, wearing the garments of a man, But notice what comes first in that list of what we just looked at. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. Psalm 71, verses 19 on to verse 20. Oh, quicker than I thought. Thy righteousness also, O God, is very high. Who has done great things, O God, who is like unto thee? Thou which hast shewed me great and sore troubles, shalt quicken me again, and shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Um, you could... I that maybe into a, up from the depths of the earth. Got to remember too, under the law, you know, the death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. So they were in Abraham's bosom. Prove that to you. Uh, Samuel, did he come down or did he come up? You go, fit, you go find that yourself. Samuel and Saul. When Saul went to the witch and Endor, not an Ewok, Okay, but when he went to that one witch and she brought up Samuel, Samuel came up. Okay, why didn't he come down? You, 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 go, feed, you go find that yourself. Okay, you go find that yourself. But Genesis 47, uh, we could have used uh, Psalm 37 on this, but Psalm 37 was more pertinent. For uh, verse 9. But uh, Exodus 37. Check this out. Verses 8 and 9. Jacob. The supplanter. <coughs> Jacob who wrestled with God. Good example of this. Verses 8 and 9. In Genesis 47. And Pharaoh said unto Jacob, How old art thou? And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Remember, okay, this is still the patriarchal period. The lifespan thing was gradually decreasing. Okay, remember. Okay, we've talked about that. All right. And Jacob said unto Pharaoh, The days of the years of my pilgrimage are an hundred and thirty years. Few and evil have the days of the years of my life been, and have not attained unto the days of the years of the life of my fathers, in the days of their pilgrimage. His fathers, uh, Abraham and Isaac. Follow this up with uh, Genesis 48, verses 15 and 16. Kind of cutting into the middle of it here, but... Go with me. And he blessed Joseph. This is when Joseph brought Manasseh and Ephraim to uh, Jacob. And Jacob did this and purposely blessed uh, Ephraim over Manasseh. Okay, he crossed his hands. Okay, and he knew it. You can read the context on your own time. We're looking at these verses for a specific part, uh, purpose. Verses 15 and 16. And he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk, the God, which fed me all my life long unto this day, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them, in the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. We looked at that specifically because the God which, all, which fed me all my life long unto this day, verse 16, the angel which redeemed me from all evil. And when you look and study the life of Jacob, <laughs> a 
Okay? And of course, the natural uh, thing to look at it when it comes to this, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Hmm. <laughs> Verses 5 on to verse 8 to start. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that, at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And what was that we looked at in verse 18 in Psalm 71? Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O God, forsake me not until I have shewed thy strength unto this generation and thy power to everyone that is to come. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verses 16 on to verse 18. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. And my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it might that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. And strengthen me that by me the preaching might be fully known. And that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And, and what is that in, uh, in John? I believe it's John. 14, John 14, John 14, John 14. Verse 30, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, one second, rather. John 16. <laughs> I thought I was in the wrong place. John, uh, John 16, verse 32 and 33. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, and I, I, I acknowledge that's easy to say to someone who doesn't have another uh, physical spirit, soul, and body with them. I understand that. I understand that. But we're all going to face death by ourselves. This, uh, the sinking submarine thing just kind of, uh, popped in at my head. Beg your pardon. But we're all going to face death by ourselves. Okay? Oh, you might be in a plane crash and die with a whole bunch of people. But see, you yourself are going to face death by yourself. Be of good cheer. The Lord has overcome. Twenty-one on to verse twenty-four in Psalm seventy-one. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. 
I will also praise thee with the psaltery. Even thy truth, O my God, unto thee will I sing with the harp, O thou Holy One of Israel. My lips shall greatly rejoice when I sing unto thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. My tongue also shall talk of thy righteousness all the day long, for they are confounded, for they are brought unto shame that seek my hurt. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 14. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 14. To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Accepted in the Beloved? What's that talking about? Oh, go to Romans chapter 11. Go to Romans chapter 11, accepted in the Beloved. We are part of the Beloved. What is the Beloved? Okay? Uh, let me see. Uh, verses 28 and 29 in Romans 11. As concerning the Gospel, they, the Hebraic Jews, are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, the Jew is the apple of God's eye, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So, made us accepted in the beloved. The Gentile, which I'm, grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? So, we're accepted in the beloved. In the beloved. We are not Jews, Hebrews ourselves. But we are grafted into that tree. Any questions, check out what is a Jew. Okay? The videos, what is a Jew? Okay, I might put them in this one, and I might not. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure which he hath proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. And this we cover, and this will be in the description box. The thing about Calvinism. All right, the Calvinist, never mind. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, were sealed, once saved, always saved, with that Holy Spirit of promise, and the Lord is that Spirit, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession Unto the praise of his glory. First Peter chapter one. First Peter chapter one. Verses three on to verse nine. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, saint, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, Ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, and you twits who say, I, well, I've seen the Lord. No, you haven't. 
Okay? You have not seen God. You have seen an angel of light. Otherwise, a devil. See, you guys, you charismatics, and one certain bloke who's like, well, I've seen it. No, you've, you've seen the devil, son. You've seen the devil. And you can try to convince yourself all day and all law, all day and night, saying, well, I've seen the Lord. No, you have not. No, you haven't. And all these charismatic twits out there, it's like, I saw Jesus. You did not. You didn't. Whom having not seen, ye love. And whom, though now ye see him not, Yet believing, and we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Romans 15, and then we will be done. Romans 15. Verses 8 on to verse 14. Now I say, now in uh, Psalm 71, about praising. Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. That's a powerful verse right there. Circumcision. Uh, Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was a Hebraic Jew. Jesus was not a Hamite. Jesus was not a Japhethian. Okay? Jesus was a Hebraic Jew of the lineage of the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Jesus wasn't black. Jesus wasn't white. Jesus was a Hebrew, a Jew. And that the Gentiles who are accepted in the Beloved might glorify God for His mercy, as it is written. For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people, accepted in the Beloved. Okay? And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and laud him, all ye people. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he, shall, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him shall the Gentiles trust. And what are we reading to? Verse 14. Now the God of hope, and Jesus Christ, he is our hope, fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope, through the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. Look at that verse. Look at that. But don't look at me. Look at verse 13 there. Isn't that a beautiful verse? Look at that. Now the God of hope. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1. Jesus Christ who is our hope. Okay. Now the God of hope. Jesus Christ. Fill you with all joy and peace and believing. We're eternally secure. Once saved always saved. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? That ye may abound in hope. We, we know where we're going. Through the power of the Holy Ghost that seal until the day of redemption, Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father Himself, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? One God. But this Trinity is stupid. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness. Full of goodness? But wait a minute, Romans 3, 10 through 18, Brad. <laughs> what, what's the source of our goodness? If you're filled with all goodness, come on, you can figure that one out. Okay? If you're filled with all goodness, and Paul even says, I know that in me there it is in my flesh doth no good thing. What is this a reference on to? 
That's right. Let's read that again. And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of all goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish, admonish, excuse me, one another. And if you're filled with all goodness, what is it, who is it that fills you? going to be it for this video. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ, this was not. You know, I'm at the point right now, dear brethren, Church of the Living God, that, I, okay, I have, I have like, uh, you know, things raring to go, waiting to go, but <laughs> unless the Lord's the one who says, okay, Brad, do that they don't come. That's, you know, that's the way it works. This is not what I was, I was expecting to talk about today, but this is what the Lord would have me to talk about today. And especially in light of certain circumstances, um, there is a young brother in Croatia. Who needs your prayers, brethren. This dear, dear young man is surrounded by the enemy. Literally. Pray for him. Please. Our brother Jeff. Jeff, he, he's given, long has given me permission to use his name. Um, He's got health problems. The, 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 his bone spurs in his shoulder, but he's also got a bad ticker like I do. Also, our dearly beloved brother Alexander. Um, he's having some... Not... Something happened with a relative of his recently that could be bad. So please keep him in your prayers. Young brother from Ohio, keep him in your prayers. Brother from New Jersey. Brother from England. Uh, excuse me, our sister from England. Um, brother from Norway and from Sweden. Both of them. Brother from Georgia. Keep each other in, in your prayers. That's going to be it. I'm going to get this uploaded. Thank you for watching this. If you do, I love you. See you in the next video.